And so as the people get that, and you mentioned that they haven't even processed all of, which is, is unfathomable, right? Because yeah. it seems like everything happens electronically these days. Yes. They haven't even processed the returns, but you look at business and in so many different sectors where either they're short staffed or because of the pandemic, people were working from home. This is all very sensitive financial information. I don't know if you could have like a home-based IRS agent kind of set up. Maybe you can. They were. They were working out of the home. You know that, and it, Of course, a lot of the IRS activity came to a halt. You know, they they weren't they weren't processing anything. They were uh, for as someone in my business when I'm trying to contact the IRS, almost impossible to get in touch with them. Uh, for anybody for and they have practitioner lines where you can contact, but they weren't even answering those phones. So, so it's very difficult to contact them. So the IRS today is one that maybe you as a, as a regular tax professional would not necessarily recognize. But is this part of maybe kind of new? And we'll talk about it at length, I think, in the next segment. But is there like, is it like a different IRS? Are they easier to work with now than maybe they have been in the past? The answer is no, no, they're not. Okay, it almost, they're going to be harder. And we, I think we're going to talk about, uh, about taxes and how the IRS is amping up to go after more people. Why? Because they need the money, right? So they, they're, there's, they have all these spending programs and they don't want to tell anybody that they're going to raise your taxes. So what they're telling you is, oh, don't worry. We're going to, we're going to go after the tax tax cheats, you know, the cryptocurrency evaders, the, the billionaires. But in the end, they're coming after small businesses. That's who's going to pay because that's who's going to get audited. And that's where that, you know, so they're not better. They're not a, 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 a nicer IRS. <laughs> oh, you know, you never know. You know we're trying to soften the, <laughs> soften the image a, a little bit. So I know. if people do want to get more information on the child tax credit and see if they're eligible, is it just irs.gov or are there sites that you've directed clients or people that have asked you to go Actually, to? the irs.gov is good, but if you need to, if you want to go to the portal, let them know what you're making or if you want to opt out. I, I set up a, a, a website, tinyurl.com slash IRS portal. And that way, I, I, that's the best. <laughs> otherwise, it's a very long uh, URL. So uh, again, tinyurl.com slash IRS portal. And you can get some info. You can go to the portal that way. If you already have been signed up and let's say you got one of the stimulus checks or two of them or three of them. And but maybe your banking information has changed at this point because it's it's different. Is there a place on that portal to go ahead and exactly. adjust that? Yes. Yes. That's where you can go and just make sure that they have your proper uh, bank account. Uh, again, you can opt out. If you didn't file your 2019 or 2020 tax returns, you can go there and, and tell them that I'm eligible and they'll send you the money, even if you haven't filed your tax return. Wow. OK, so this is some great insight and, and ways to at least work with whether it's the kinder, gentler or not. IRS, uh, let the listeners know we're talking with attorney Stephen A. 